Am I good at Blender? Now, that's probably a question that almost everybody who's just learning Blender is wondering, am I beginner, am I intermediate? I don't know. Well, today I generated a list of tips that if you know these, you're really well on your way of from intermediate to pro. And if you don't know these, well, don't feel bad. Literally the difference between knowing them and not knowing them is watching this video. So let's get into those. So this one's really convenient. Blender can actually do math for you. Let me show you. So I have this object and I wanna animate it to rotate five times. So what I can do is go over here to the rotation and go to the end of my timeline and type in 360, which is one rotation, asterisk, five so that's gonna be 360 times five enter that's uh 1800 and now it is going to rotate five times super convenient say you have an object and you're trying to rotate it but when you use it it just rotates just drastically too fast and that happens all the time and say it's rotation we'll say you do it and it's too fast you can actually hold down shift and move your mouse the same exact speed but it will slow it down and give you a much smoother much more controlled motion i do that with materials and movements and rotations all the time with really sensitive components all right so i have the material on this object and i want to be able to edit say the shape of the voronoi or the emission or the or the layer weight and i don't have access to it very easily over here and say i don't want to open up a new window to reveal the shader editor because sometimes it just takes up too much space so what you can do is go to the node system where you built this guy highlight it and hit Control g you're going to have this thing called the group input and this little string connect it to all the components you want to have quick access to so i'm going to do the shape of the voronoi i'm going to do the blend on the layer weight and i'm going to do the hue on my hue sat node now, while I'm in this view, I can go over here to the shader button and say, all right, I can play with the scale here. I can play with the layer weight blend, and I can also play with the hue, very easy access. Now, another thing that's really gonna help you as a beginner is knowing about the Blender Market Spring Sale. I'm just kidding. That's not true at all, but it is happening right now. Today is the last day of the spring sales. So you can grab tons and tons of courses and add-ons. I'll promote mine really quickly. I have the real-time materials add-on, which is an add-on with currently 290 procedural materials. You can apply to anything in one click. I have my motion graphics course. We'll give you kind of the beginning to intermediate stages of learning motion graphics and making really cool things. And if you're interested in learning how to make procedural materials, I have a beginner course just for that. That'll show you a bunch of really cool things. Now, if you're watching this, after the 5th when that sale is over use the code D3 YouTube so that you can still get 25% off definitely wanted to give you guys a code if you're watching this afterwards with that being said hit the link in the description let's get back into these tips so while you're working on really big scenes that just have a lot of things going on in them, sometimes you just want to focus on one object, hit this key right here, and that is going to isolate any object so you can just focus on it and you can hit it again to bring it back. I remember I was working on, I remember I just wanted to focus on the original instance here. So I just hit that, I zoomed back out and then I can focus on just that and it makes it easier on your viewport. That key, super cool. All right, for this next tip, when I learned it, truthfully, it made my life so easy and way less frustrating. So say you're in a scene right here and you're just trying to edit this light, maybe move it around, all that stuff. And then you wanna go back to an object you were working on. So you go and you navigate and you find it. Now I wanna focus on this guy, but now I'm trying to rotate to see my view and it's trying to bring me back over here and sometimes zooming gets all screwed up. So what you can do to reset your kind of point of origin is click on the object you want it to be, which is this sphere. Then I'm hit the period key and now it's gonna rotate around it so that it's super easy. So say if I wanna go back to that light, I can go way over here and now it's already starting to have problems. I can't zoom in anymore, but I wanna see that. So I'll click on that light right there, hit the period key, and now he is my point of origin. It's, it's a lifesaver. When working on scenes, having flat view, no perspective is gonna help you out. And I constantly use the tilde key, which is always right above the tab key on most of the keyboards I'm using. When you click that, have really quick access to left, right, especially if you don't have a number pad, you can also do this with the number pad. I'm constantly using the tilde key to bounce around and it is it's constantly used this one's kind of a preference or even like a static thing but in your edit preference you can go to the interface and change the size of your user interface I like my big buttons like I'm an old person just the big buttons make it easy and also for YouTube videos it makes it easy for you guys to see things but I just found a better experience having a much larger user interface. If you've been watching my tutorials for a while, you'll know this one right here, and it's hitting G and R to move things around. So we're here in cycles and I have this point light and I wanna rotate them. So I can rotate them like that, but notice how it's just kind of jumping around. I want it to be free form. So I'll hit R twice. And now I just point him like a flashlight wherever I want him to be. And then I'll hit G 
to move him. So if I switch here to flat view, it makes rearranging lights really easy. So I'll hit G and then I'll hit that. And I'll go down and I'll hit R twice just to kind of point him in the right direction and we're good. So if you're in your final render view, say that'd be Cycles or Eevee, and you're trying to make sure that your depth of field is accurate or good, especially in animation, it can be really tough when you're in the Eevee or Cycles kind of main render view. But if you're in the viewport shading tab, you can actually adjust your depth of field by hitting this drop down right here. So normally by default, it's there. They're like, oh, okay, I gotta go to Eevee to check my depth of field to make sure it works. Okay, I can see it's in focus. But you go here, hit the drop down, turn on depth of field, and now when I press play, I can actually monitor the depth of field without it being very intensive on my uh, computer and no noise with cycles and all that stuff. You can get an accurate reading on your depth of field, especially if you're animating your depth of field. And the last thing is this guy right here, the resolution slider. And say I have it at 1080p and I want it to be 4K, we'll just type in 200 and now it's 4K. But say, hey, I wanna make sure that this renders out. I wanna render it out to make sure everything's working properly, but I don't wanna to have to wait for a full render. We'll just slide this guy down to like 20%, render it out, it'll render it out really quickly. You can test it and then bring it back to 100% for your final render. So there you go. Those are what I consider tips that every beginner should know if you're really progressing to the next level. And there are so many more of these. I'm definitely gonna have a video for intermediates and pro. Really cool stuff. I love this video. I hope you got something out of it. Be sure to check out the Blender Market Spring Sale. Tons of great creators there and it really helps support the Blender Development Fund as well. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.